वेलकम टू प्रैक्टिकल मेडिसिन टूडेज टॉपिक इज टेकी कार्डिया एंड ब्रेडी कार्डिया बिफोर वी आर प्रोसीडिंग टूवर्ड्स द टेकी कार्डिया एंड ब्रेडी कार्डिया वी शुड नो अबाउट द हार्ट रेट सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई हार्ट रेट इट इज द नंबर ऑफ हार्ट बीट्स पर मिनिट द नंबर ऑफ हार्ट बीट्स पर मिनिट देन वी कैन से दैट इट्स हार्ट रेट what is the difference between the pulse rate and heart rate when we put a stethoscope over the heart then it's heart rate and when we are going to measure the pulses at the radial artery then it is known as pulse rate so pulse rate it is the transmission of the pressure waves through the arteries during the contraction phase of the heart chambers normal value of heart rate it is 60 to 100 on an average 72 heart rate per minute in adults when the heart rate is less than 60 it is called bradycardia when the heart rate decrease to less than 60 then it is called bradycardia when the heart rate is more than 100 then it's called tachycardia increase in heart rate above the normal level it's tachycardia and decrease in heart rate below the normal level then it's called bradycardia now the differential diagnosis of the tachycardia when we find tachycardia with the warm skin erythema sweats temperature more than 38 degree celsius and when it is confirmed by the temperature chart fever pattern as well as blood sputum urine skin swab cultures then we can say that it is due to fever tachycardia is due to fever when we find tachycardia with the paler sweats decrease in blood pressure poor urine output and peripheral perfusion as well as there is decrease in the hemoglobin level that can be normal at the beginning along with the low central venous pressure when all these things are happening with the tachycardia then we can say that it is due to the hemorrhagic conditions when the tachycardia occurs with the cyanosis and distress and we also found that uh, there is decrease in the partial pressure of the oxygen then this tachycardia we can say that the reason is hypoxia when tachycardia occurs with the sweating fine tremor weight loss lead leg frequent bowel movements when all these things happen with the increase in the free t4 level as well increase in the free t3 level and decrease in the thyroid stimulating hormone level tsh increase in the free t4 level increase in the free t3 level and decrease in the tsh level along with all these features plus tachycardia then we can say that it is due to the thyrotoxicosis when tachycardia along with the subconjunctival and nail bed paler and there is decrease in the hemoglobin level inside the body then we can say that the tachycardia is due to severe anemia that is due to acute blood loss or chronic pathology deficiency for example folate iron vitamin b12 deficiency then this type of anemia we can say that due to this severe anemia when the tachycardia occurs with some sort of drug history and we can also find that when the drug is stopped the heart rate will become still normal so this type of tachycardia along with the drug history then this occurs in the drugs related to amphetamines and beta agonist all right so these are the differential diagnosis of the tachycardia continue when the tachycardia occurs with the breathlessness displays apex beat third heart sound bilateral basal crackles increased jugular venous pressure and swollen legs that is confirmed by the chest x ray we can find on the chest x ray there is fluffy opacification especially in the perihelar region horizontal liner opacities in the peripherally as well as the bilateral effusions large heart poor r wave progression on the ecg impaired left ventricular function on the echocardiogram so when all that is suggested with the tachycardia and it is confirmed by chest x ray as well as the ecg as well as the echocardiogram then we can say that it is due to the heart failure left ventricular right ventricular or congestive cardiac failure associated with ischemic heart disease myocarditis valvular disease or arrhythmias all right now the next when we found increase in the heart rate or the tachycardia along with the sudden breathlessness pleural rub 
साइनोसिस और हाइपोक्सिया लाउड पी टू साइंस ऑफ डीप वीनस थ्रोम्बोसिस रिस्क फैक्टर्स सच एज रिसेंट सर्जरी इमोबिलिटी प्रीवियस एम्बोलाई और मालिग्नसी एंड वेन इट इज कन्फर्म बाई द सीटी पलमोनरी एनजियोग्राम दैट शोज क्लोट इन द पलमोनरी आर्टरी सो ऑल दिस अलॉन्ग विद टेकी कार्डिया वी कैन सी दैट दैट इज द कंडीशन ऑफ पलमोनरी एम्बोलिज्म इन्फ्रैक्शन दैट इज अराइजिंग विथ इन द लंग और फ्रॉम द डीप वेन्स और द लेफ्ट एट्रियम so that is the differential diagnosis when we found tachycardia along with all these features and that is confirmed by the pulmonary angiogram then it is the pulmonary embolus or infraction now when the tachycardia having the specific ecg appearance like regular normal qrs complexes in the supraventricular tachycardia irregularly irregular qrs complexes in the atrial fibrillation wide regular qrs complexes in the ventricular tachycardia increase in the potassium level or decrease in the potassium level when we found all these things along with the tachycardia with specific ecg appearance of this then we can say that it is due to cardiac tachyarrhythmia supraventricular tachycardia atrial flutter or fibrillation ventricular tachycardia that is associated with the electrolyte imbalance especially hypokalemia hypokalemia that means decrease in the potassium level so all these are the differential diagnosis related to the tachycardia and these are all different features when we found all of this then we can say that the heart failure first one second one pulmonary embolus or infraction and this one cardiac tachyarrhythmia supraventricular tachycardia atrial flutter fibrillation ventricular tachycardia that is associated with the imbalance especially of the hypokalemia now bradycardia differential diagnosis when we found the bradycardia in young or fit patient that is asymptomatic as well as there is normal history or the examination then this type of bradycardia it is seen in the athletic patients and that is the athletic heart now when we find the bradycardia with the history of beta blockers or digoxin as well as there is a revert tick sign on the ecg and serum level of the digoxin toxicity that has been noted then we can say that that is due to the drug effect this bradycardia is due to the drug effect now when we find the bradycardia in elderly as well as the patient is known case of ischemic heart disease along with the ecg finding abnormal p wave or pr interval or pose is more than 25 so that is typically seen in the sinoatrial disease and uh, it may be suggestive of myocardial ischemia when the bradycardia is associated with the known ischemic heart disease and we also found ecg and 24 hour ecg premature ectopics with compensatory pause when all these features we are going to confirm by ecg then we can say that it is the ventricular or supraventricular bigemini and uh, it may be suggestive of myocardial ischemia when we found the bradycardia that is along with the central chest pain plus radiating to jaw and either arm specifically on the left arm there is continuous pain typically over 30 minutes and not relieved by rest or night rest and on ecg when we found increased st of 1 mm in limb leads or 2 mm in chest leads on serial ecg as well as there is level of troponin i increase then this is suggestive of bradycardia specifically of the myocardial infraction when we found the bradycardia with the constipation weight gain dry skin dry hair reduced reflexes or energy that is confirmed by increase in the thyroid stimulating hormone as well as decrease in the t4 level then this bradycardia is due to the hypothyroid conditions when the bradycardia is associated with the history of exposure to cold temperature and or prolonged immobility and we found that the core temperature is less than 35 degree celsius then this bradycardia is due to hypothermia when bradycardia occurs with the drug history as well renal failure and uh, we also found that when the electrolyte balance is corrected then the heart rate will become normal along with the ecg 
there is T wave changes occurs. So this type of bradycardia is due to severe electrolyte disturbances, especially very high potassium or very low potassium levels, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia. So that is all about the differential diagnosis of the bradycardia. If you like this presentation, please try to share it with your friends, group, batch and colleagues. Thank you so much everyone.